Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Thank you for joining us at this late hour. I have with me Elmer Yuan, who's a very busy man, and he could find time only at this time of the day. And I'm very grateful to him for joining us today. Elmer, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you, sir? Thank you for inviting me again. Thank you. So, Elmer, uh, I've watched with interest Lay's Real Talk channel where she talked about the real GDP of China. Now, she calculated it in two different ways. And, and she was a Wall Street journalist. She has worked with Wall Street. She has been a financial analyst for many years. Now she does this show full time. Very popular show. I watched it many times. And this one was extremely interesting because of the way she calculated the real GDP of China. And here, what she has found two different ways. One of them I can totally relate to, which I'm going to just describe in a few seconds. So what she said was, you can compute the GDP of any country in the world by looking at the amount of lighting that happens at the night using satellite imagery. And she said that whatever numbers you get, you have to adjust it by 35% when you are dealing with dictators because they tend to inflate. The 35% we may... We can we can argue saying maybe it is less, maybe it is more, but this is just a factor that they have computed over a period of time, 30 years. And there's a person who has done this research. So she just applied those numbers to China and the number was incredible. Instead of $18 trillion economy, <laughs> China was actually only a $5.3 trillion economy. Now, exactly. she, did, she arrived at the same number using a different method. She called it a hybrid where she looked at the number of cars flying and, and lights and a few other things. And the number comes to be the same. So the, very, the, the most damning thing in this whole thing, Elmer, and you can explain a little bit more. She said that once Xi Jinping came to power, you know, the Chinese Statistical Institute took out a lot of variables that used to be used in computation of GDP because he felt that these would drag the GDP down. So you have a very unscientific method of computing the GDP, which is the official number of 18 trillion. So now with the COVID having taken a heavy toll, China is finding it very difficult to get back on its feet. I'll leave you the floor now. You can tell us what, how realistic you think the 5.3 trillion number is because then it is rarely ahead of uh, Japan at 5.3 trillion. Now, the lesson we learn here is you should not be reading these uh, major mainstream newspaper or television. They right. take the number from China, our oh, GDP growth, four point something, and then they play with the number, a little bit up, a little bit down, and so on and so forth. All right. That number by itself is a lie. That number is, to and they know how you, how, who, who will be working on a number and give different results. First, they give it to IMF and then the World Bank. And they have people working in IMF and the World Bank who will comment on the number. So it make it look like that uh, IMF and World Bank are, are involved in the, in the statistics. And then all the major Western news, newspaper, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, they start talking about it. All right. And then they say a little bit down the road. These are the lazy uh, journalists. They don't do their homework. And for years, for the last 30 years, they've been helping the communists to lie. One thing I really uh, asked Xi Jinping should do, he should write a book, The Art of Lying. Seriously. <laughs> the number they give you, they, they make it in a way that they can predict what you are going to say about comment. That's how good they are. It's not just lying. You know, anybody knows to, to give a, 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 a just a blind lie. But to lie in a way that the number that he knows how you are going to uh, play with it. So, but anyway, it's a whole bunch of lies. So even Li Keqiang, the previous uh, prime minister, said you really should look at other things and then come up with your own conclusion. So this uh, lady, uh, L E I Li, which was like 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 us, you know, a YouTuber, and uh, she is uh, probably a statistician uh, or analyst in Wall Street and very logical and so and she's from China. Uh, I think she came here very early, even in high school. That's why she has a very little accent. So anyway, she's really good. I, I only discovered her yesterday and everything she said turned out to be exactly the same conclusion as mine. Of course, but she goes, 
I, in fact, I know the vice minister in charge of statistics in Beijing. You know, <laughs> the, 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 he collect all the number from different provinces. And he told me, don't believe those numbers because it's all supplied from local and it's even audited locally. Locally mean, meaning province or cities. So meaning that uh, they make up whatever they want for the central leadership or, or, the, or the central government. So he said, when the business is down, no, when the business is bad, good, let's say from the year 2000, since they joined the WTO, then they report down because they don't want to carry the responsibility of next year to have the better performance. So they actually underreported. But when the business is bad, they overreported. You know, they have their, it's, it's, uh, you understand, we have a lot of bureaucrats in uh, India, right? You know, you know how they how they behave, you know, to their superior. So, which means they are totally unreliable. I'm talking about that that person at the Ministry of in of Commerce in Beijing telling me this, like like this, you know, while we are eating. You know, <laughs> this is how it works. I mean, th this is why I don't need to work as Lee. You know, all these numberings. Um, she works really hard and good. So, anyway, going to the GDP. You know, I never trusted it. And in, in, in fact, and a couple of shows ago, I told you, is a you call a lie a lie. I, I don't even need to go through the, the their way. But uh, uh, the simple thing to do, what why Lee is so good? She went through the pain killing, you know, every year, year by year. What happened is the base you use is overblown. You understand? So you 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 say I have five percent up this year. The base, the base has been cumulatively wrong. So from from something like fourteen trillion. <laughs> today is supposed to be the GDP. Once you lie, you have to keep on lying. And you cannot go back. It's like accounting. You always, uh, you, when you do your financial, you always have the previous year, right? You have one column of this year and one column of the previous year to, for comparison. So you cannot lie because you already reported or published last year's result. Now you need to pull both. So the lie on top of lie. So what she is saying, which is correct, because I never did accumulation. I only hear, and then I give you that year's number. When they say plus five, I said minus 20. You know, this is the way I work. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Lee actually goes through painstakingly every year. So the real GDP today, she said, it's only five point something trillion US dollars. No different from Japan. All right. So they think Japan and China is about the same. All right. And Japanese their personal, uh, what do you call, per capita GDP is 10 times of Chinese. Their population yes. is one-tenth of China. So this is right. really the reality. How, this is how good the Japanese are, 10 times more productive than, uh, than, than Chinese. Now, this number is not the end. Let me tell you, I have to comment on this number because the Chinese exchange rate is false. The exchange rate is false. We have an underground exchange rate through Macau. People come to Macau, pretend to gamble. All right? Actually, they are laundering their money through the casino, which is not so hard, you know? Whenever they say, oh, I won in casino, or I lost in casino, so, so that the tax or, or, or Ch Chinese Communist Party cannot tell, say that, you know, they make up a whole bunch of stories. So, but anyway, Macau has a underground uh, money, laund money exchange uh, uh, rate. And right now, all right, official rate is one US dollar to about 6.5 RMB. But the underground rate, I would say roughly about one US dollar to 10 RMB. Right? So it's not strange. I mean, in I mean, I think some time ago in India, you may also have two rates, right? Official. Did I hear you say 10 RMB? 10 RMB? 10 RMB to one US dollars. And the official rate now is about six point something. It's, it fluctuates. So, but the, the, the point is, the point is, if you put that exchange rate, first of all, the, the whole GDP is calculated in RMB, right? And you divide it by 6.5 and divide by 10, give totally different results. So China's real GDP is more like maybe four, not even four, maybe four trillion US dollars, which is lower than Jap Japan. And this is all, I've always been saying, they were never number two. They are more like three or four in the world in terms of GDP. And the problem is, I really want to emphasize here, you cannot count on the country's strength by GDP. 
this is only this MBA or whatever PhD. You know, I mean, they, 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 this is the way they do things. It's, this is not wealth. Wealth is not by GDP. Wealth is by net worth. You know, you buy it, you go to the stock market, you do your analysis. The GDP is nothing but turnovers. You know, lots of turnovers. Some companies have huge turnovers. You look at the brokers in Wall Street, every day they trade, huge turnovers. I mean, that, does that look like a GDP? It has to be wealth. You look at some rich people in India, look at their wealth, really. I mean, how much their net worth is. That's one way. The other way is you look at from the market capital. That's also wealth, all right? Because that's how, how investors perceive your value of your company. So this whole thing about GDP, again, you know, the communists suddenly realized the West believe in GDP. So they have to work on the GDP to use the GDP to cheat all this time. That's not wealth. I mean, uh, the, the real, the West, of course, has a very disciplined way of, of, uh, of uh, analyzing uh, financial. So that GDP has a lot of uh, substance. But the Chinese, this is the way the government works. Oh, I'm going to borrow uh, the government, talking about local government. They're going to uh, borrow a few more trillion dollars and build a roads and bridges that nobody uses. And that's also GDP. That is also GDP. This is the danger. In fact, in Japan, when they had the bubble, or when they hit the bubble, it's, that started in Japan too. Because they can easily borrow money. Same thing with China. Now, the Chinese have huge crisis. And because of the property market, you know, Basically, it's it's over, all right. It's over. So the local government have always been depending sixty percent of their revenue from auctioning of their land rights. The the land is not for sale. You have about fifty to seventy years the right to use the land. It's a lease, leasehold instead of uh, uh, what do you call a uh, yeah. freehold. You know, here in the UK or something US, we have freehold. So, but so what happened is. The local government will spend money to make the infrastructure of that piece of land or that's that whole few pieces of land, you know, a road, piping, sewage, electricity, optical fiber, you name it. So once they finish that, once they finish that, then they can sell, auction it off at a very high price to the property developers. Now, properties are not selling. In fact, they are Shanghai alone. On the um, on the board, uh, fit uh, five hundred thousand units on sale, second hand uh, uh, property on sale, five hundred thousand. The total Shanghai number of apartments were probably about eight million, eight point five million, roughly. So can you imagine five hundred thousand on That's board? That's six percent. Yeah, it's huge. This is huge, and more. So suddenly, people are rushing. To sell because the, the the later you sell, the lower price you get. S same thing with the, like the stock market. When everybody's selling, you have to be the first to sell. Shanghai and and Beijing, they are a little bit slow. They are not businessmen. They are politicians. Hundred and twenty thousand on the market for to, to second hand on sale. It's a huge problem. Now starting from this collapse, real. Pro I, I think I've talked about in the in the last last two times Episode. about yeah. how the how the property market relate. Now from the, this end. They basically bankrupted the, the local government. The local government have no more income. Nobody buys land. So the, the expense is the same. So the total debt of the local government, there are rumors, you know, different numbers. So roughly about 10 trillion US dollars, 10 to 15 trillion US dollars. This is very, very, very serious. And they cannot generate enough money just even to cover the interest. The interest is growing faster than their, their, their local income. Nobody, and since the business is way down in China, nobody pays tax anyway, local tax or federal tax. So they basically have no income. The province, the local government are going bankrupt. They are many, I believe about 20%. China has about 30 provinces, and that 20% means they about six provinces already bankrupted. Already bankrupted, and the, and uh, Li Keqiang, the last uh, the last prime minister of Hong, of China, he said, uh, "Whoever's baby, you take it home yourself. Don't leave it here." 
So which means you take care of your own dad, <laughs> take home your, <laughs> your own baby. That's what that's the exact what he said. So you know, you know this is I don't make it up. He, he, these are very humorous guys, you know. So anyway, Li Keqiang of course left. All right, before his retiring age, with a whole bunch of his uh, followers. Wang Yang, they are two very good, uh, both are um, yes, uh, ministers. Yes, yes. With a minister. notable exclusion, notable exclusion from politics. Yeah, yeah. They suddenly they, they yeah. leave. They say, I don't want to be blamed. You know, the, 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 it's coming. So, so what's happening? The economy is in big trouble, and the government, local government, is in trouble. But the central government, you have look at their attitude. They mean buying gold. They have money to buy gold. Can you imagine? Gold does not generate anything, right? Gold, you have to put a spend money to find a secure place to 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 put to put it away. They've been buying gold, so they are. This is they are thinking about their own lifeboat in case the regime collapse, so that they put the gold. All right, they can send the gold to Switzerland. You know, uh, UBS, uh, Credit Suisse. That's their 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 best uh, bankers. All right. Uh, um, <laughs> so anyway, now become one. Now become one bank. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, I mean, I want to tell our viewers about the funny thing about the computation of GDP. Let's say there are two households, uh, A and B. And Mrs. A, if Mrs. A goes and cooks in B's house, whatever the amount of time that she gets compensated for the labor, that adds towards GDP. Now, let us say Mrs. B comes and cooks in A's house. Okay, that also gets added up to GDP. If if you run a bullet train from place A to place B, it doesn't matter how many people are traveling in that. That counts towards GDP. So there are some easy things that you can game. In fact, Lake sets out by saying that the reason China always talks about only GDP is because this is the easiest one to manipulate. <laughs> I mean, that is a revelation, guys. I'm going to send you the link in the description section do watch it because what we are talking about is just basically the big heavy uh, you know the highlights of that video but there's a lot of work that has gone into that video i tip my hat to her i hope to have lay come and be a guest on our, ch our channel soon so now the second question that i have for you um elmer is see we we now have a situation where you said that the RMB is what six point three to a dollar. Now that's the official different... rate. Official yeah, rate. but uh, official rate. But in a different conversation that you and I had, when I showed you four notes with the same identical serial number, some some loudmouth from China who doesn't like truth being told said that you and I sat in a basement and printed four copies, and then we are trying to use that <laughs> as as a proof. So. You have to understand, Mr. Loudmouth, that this was not even Elmer's data. This was before Elmer even came on our channel. I had this data from before. This one. This one. Okay. Same so number. Elmer, huh? Same, yeah, same serial, serial number. number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you, did you not tell me, sir, that usually there are six copies of the same note? Uh, I, I said about three copies. That's what okay. I know. So far, I have uh, I have seen pictures. All right. But... But I, I wouldn't be surprised. Nobody knows. You think the, the communist uh, government cheat? They officially <laughs> cheat on top of what well, <laughs> they, they were. They cheat the cheaters. Uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. Guys, guys you so, can, cl you can see it clearly. Go back, please. So go this back. is why they have to go to digital that. currency. They are, they've yes, already yes. they've tested on 20 cities. I believe yeah. this year, the whole China will go to a digital currency. Exactly that's one of the reasons. You cannot make a duplicate anymore. <laughs> Unless, of course, you can do it programmatically, in which case that's uh, the government that it can do it. No, no. Uh, uh, Sri, I want to add one sentence. It's very important. Yeah. Everybody said, wow, your economy is such a mess. China will collapse. Why aren't, why aren't they collapsed? In any other country, it's finished. All right? They bankrupted. But what happened is all the banks are totally controlled by the People's Bank of China. All right? Which is the central bank. Bank. Yeah. They control all your deposits. That is the problem. So if the government control, you know, you, Sri, you have, let's say, you have deposit in India, right? And if the Indian government control all control all your deposit, who is going to bankrupt first? You, not the government. You understand? 
<laughs> of true, course, true. why should I mean, you, 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 the people will go bankrupt first before the government. That's why they are not going bankrupt. People will starve, and the Wang Qishan said people would even eat grass to survive. But not the not the not the not the uh, government officials. They eat the uh, shark fins. So <laughs> this is the problem. They are not going down. It has to be some external factor that forced them to to quit the, the 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 change of regime or something. So it's not going to come from internally. Now, one important data ma data fact that people need to understand. You know, you guys will come back and tell us, "Oh, we are speaking without facts." Here is a fact. Ray Dalio, a very big Wall Street investor, recently pulled out all his investments from China. Elmer, talk to us a little bit about the impact of not just him, but many other people are pulling out their money from China and how are they leaving their asset? Like you have money you can take out, but what about uh, 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 immovable asset? Like, for example, you have a factory floor manufacturing some high end equipment. How does Ray Dalio get rid of those assets? Talk to us a little bit about what is, is it? Is it Ray? Of course, this number one, uh, number one, we call him a panda. Hug, hug, hugging panda, panda mm. hugger. So he's been very, very uh, positive on China. Only at, uh, until a few months ago, where he took, uh, I think, a 13-day tour of China, and after he came back, he liquidated almost everything. Uh, everything, not almost. He liquidated all his uh, China, China investment, like Alibaba and so on and so forth. He's involved in everything, and uh, and and he said it's hopeless. He saw it's going socialist. He saw China, Xi Jinping, is really going socialist. And even uh, Buffett is selling his uh, BYD stock and also selling his TSMC stock. They're very good stock. But the problem is he's worried about war. What if there's a conflict when plane got shot down over the Taiwan Strait? So suddenly the, the stock market can drop like a rock, whether it's Taiwan or mainland China. So the situation is not good. The overall stock market is losing because nobody wants to take a risk when you have even conflict with India here and there every day, everywhere. South China Sea, Taiwan Sea, uh, East Sea, Yellow Sea. Now they got the, they are going to, the, the US is already has a um, nuclear submarine. Uh, it's uh, Ohio type in Korea. And if you look at the map, Korea is a peninsula. The west of that peninsula is very close to Beijing. It's like your arm. All right. Just, just, yeah, just, just one second, Elmer. I should have played this video at the beginning. The reason we is these days YouTube is cracking down. And I want to tell our viewers, we are still essentially analyzing what others said. And, and we just want to make sure that we have a disclaimer in place. Elmer, please bear with me while we play the disclaimer. Out. Go ahead. Start from the beginning. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really sorry for having. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. It's fine. Yeah. But Korea but, is the big problem, all right? They have a something called Washington Declaration or something, all right? Well, which means it's really a joint uh, alliance between Korea and U.S. And U.S. promised to send nuclear submarine and aircraft carrier to Korea. And if you look at the map on Korea, Korea, North Korea, South Korea is a peninsula. And the west of that peninsula is called the Yellow Sea, very famous Yellow Sea. And you look at that, it's so close to Beijing and Shanghai. Within minutes, your hypersonic missiles would reach Beijing and reach Shanghai. And the Chinese have a hypersonic uh, weapon, only for shooting, but for not, to, not for defending. As you know, yesterday, uh, uh, Ukraine shot down one hypersonic uh, missile. Well, of Russia, uh, who's a uh, service from Russia. And this is a remarkable thing. You know, you only have, a, let's say, maybe a couple of minutes to respond. All right. right, they, right, uh, right. From the plane, the plane gets pretty close to Kiev. All right. Maybe a few hundred uh, miles from Kiev. And then they shoot it from top down, which means it's faster. It's almost can easily reach 10 mark, mark 10. So, and they are able to intercept it with the Patriot, uh, Patriot. Patriot, right, uh, missile, 
which is remarkable, meaning their calculation, that chips are so good in calculating, it's also using GPU, which means now uh, 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 China has the same, also has, they stole the technology from Russia. All right. As a result, the head of the institute went to prison for selling the Chinese the solution to the hypersonic uh, missile. But anyway, this, this is a huge event. The huge, you know, and let me go back to Korea. And yeah. if you look at the Korean Peninsula, the submarine can be in the Yellow Sea. And it's almost like pointing a gun at your armpit. And if you pull up a little bit, it gets on your brain, which is Beijing. And if you point down a little bit, it's against your heart, which is Shanghai. And this is how close it is. It's no longer, it's not a game anymore. It's not like a island chain, island chain, uh, 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 number one island chain. This is right into their, what do you call, uh, 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 right into next to, your, to, the, to the body. It's, it's zero. It's, uh, it's, so China will react. I promise you, China will react. Because originally they used North Korea as a buffer. Now you've gone into the inside the buffer, so North Korea suddenly has no use to China, all right? And you can reach China within minutes, either Shanghai or Beijing. So China will have to, you're forcing China to do something drastic. And I believe it's gonna come in a matter of weeks. This is a very serious threat to security of, uh, of uh, Beijing. And the communists are very good, including Russia or whoever, they are in attacking but they don't really spend or invest any money in defending. So their, their defense mechanism is very poor. So they need to uh, really create some international incident to force U.S. to back off. And this Washington de Declaration in the beginning is only Korea and, uh, and U.S., but I think Japan and then maybe Australia and Taiwan will always join, also join so that it becomes the so-called the Asian NATO. As a matter of fact, even India is monitoring all the submarine Good. movement of China. See, what they did was uh, China has used one of Myanmar's islands called Coco Island to build a base there to snoop on India. See, mm. you know, the, remember the Malacca Strait, yeah, right? The river, yeah. Malacca Strait. Yeah. Yes. So, India's Indira Point, that's the lowest point in these islands called Andaman and Nicobar, that's only 90 kilometers from the coast of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So if Indonesia and India decide to blockade Malacca Strait, it's game over for China. Mm -hmm. so what they did was, uh, this. think of it, this, uh, the Andaman Islands are at, at an angle like this. On top of the topmost point is called Coco Island. This used to belong to Myanmar, but Myanmar has given them building rights. So they have constructed a snooping uh, uh, in fact, they have an aircraft, uh, airport also now. So they are mm -hmm. trying to threaten. Now India is also pushing back hard. India is not only monitoring them all around that area, it's also gone to South China Sea. Like you said, there is a united effort now to try and tell that we are not going to allow you to do flexing. So that is one situation. The other question I wanted to ask you, we were talking about this uh, and I just want to touch upon this. It was believed that the sanctions would completely cripple Russia. However, what we are hearing now is China is giving money like hand over fist. How is China now covertly helping Russia? Is it just is it just money or is it also you know equipment like whatever the hypersonic or whatever it is? Because Russia does not have the electronics anymore, right? No, this is totally untrue. I, I think in my last interview with you, I said the sanction, U.S. sanction against China, uh, against uh, Russia may be working pretty good, but against China are full of holes. Right now, the Chinese export, I'm only totally talking about, uh, let's say, uh, March. The March Chinese export to Russia up by 46%. Wow. So all the containers, there was a bridge in the Usuri River, the river between uh, Russia and China border, uh, the bridge was was built but never opened in the last 30 years. They opened it and now the trucks with containers and whatever, who, who knows what's inside, been going, huge lines going. So through trucks, through railway, railway is going through Mongolia and Manchuli and also by ships through Vladivostok. 
they are shipping so much to Russia. But unfortunately, the Russian only pay half in ruble and half in RMB. So it's really not a, it's a very bad business. But the overall Chinese export is up. They claim uh, total overall 12 or 13 percent up. It's because of Russia. They are shipping everything. Russia needs everything. Cars, you name it. Whatever China has, they send it to them. Good quality, rejects, bad quality, they take it all. So, so this is what, what's happening. But Russian is terrible. I think Russian is finished. Russia has never, they were relying on Western management. The, the Russian very much, there are over 2,000 Western companies helping Russian, even power plants. Can you imagine? Russian power plants all mostly uh, managed by uh, uh, German or even the Finland, uh, Finnish. So it's terrible. The whole Russia is basically is uh, is totally what you collapsed. And uh, China is uh, putting money into a black hole. There, there's no, nobody knows how much. And the Russians are not happy. They say it's not enough because they, they believe that the Xi Jinping have promised the sun and the moon and the star. But Xi Jinping, of course, he's not going to piss off the Europeans. So he can only do it secretly. So maybe the expectation of what uh, is 10 times of what he promised to deliver. So they are in the pissing competition. In the end, let me tell you, uh, looks like uh, Putin will lose, right? Lose the war in Ukraine. And the end result is uh, Russia will break up. I think everybody is discussing about the post Putin Russia, how to split them up and then take over whatever good interest. So of course, Chinese want to take back that uh, uh, that uh, Far East, that whole piece that was uh, uh, given away by Jiang Zemin, uh, uh, not really through the, I mean, whatever it is, <laughs> certain dispute. And Japan, of course, want their four islands. And they may also want the Sakhalin, because Sakhalin is now uh, supplying a lot of gas and oil to Japan. So again, to India too. To India, to India too. too. So the whole Russia believe will split up into maybe six or seven. Uh, they have a republic and they have province. And the people with the soldier died mostly are from this Asian side. Now, I, I wanted just one clarification for our viewers' sake. You said I was totally wrong. When you say totally wrong, you're saying that sanctions against China may not be working, that they're not working at all. Get, yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to clarify that the sanctions against Russia, we were saying that it was, why are they not working? That is because China is now helping them back door. We think. And we, the, we Hong Kong yeah. are buying all the chips and shipping to Russia. And the Russian put it on the publish the custom clearance. Can you imagine? So the next thing Hong Kong is going to happen, we're going to lose our US dollar and Hong Kong dollar pack uh, because the business to Russia has been huge. They need our chips to build all these missiles. Which and brings drugs. us to the last question. Uh, the Hong Kong uh, US dollar peg. Now, this was the reigning uh, you know, wisdom that uh, as long as Hong Kong was a democracy, that it was following the you know one country, two systems principle, where Hong Kong had its own democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, United States said that, yes, we will give you a peg. And that was the entry point for many of the Wall Street investors and U.S. investors to come into China because they were dealing with the Hong Kong dollar on which they had some measure of transparency about what happened. Now, that has gone away because China has annexed Hong Kong in every way possible. Yeah. And, and we've been talking about this is like a nuclear option for U.S. because if U.S. does it itself, it stands to lose the most. Even though it's a makeup thing that there is a Hong Kong dollar, the Hong Kong dollar is it becoming stronger now or weaker now? Where do you see that with the RMB? Of forward? course, we Hong Kong people. There's about a million Hong Kong people have left, and of course, their money leave first, and the most of it's gone to Singapore. Singapore has has the tremendous gain, and Hong Kong is no longer a financial center. Uh, you remember when this. Ant Finance. Remember, there's this company under Alibaba. Ant Finance wanted to do IPO in yes, Hong Kong. Yes. They wanted yes. to raise something like 30 billion US dollars. And the oversubscription is talking about almost 100 times. You know yeah. how much money has pulled into Hong Kong to get this uh, IPO, uh, you know, lottery. It's work on a lottery basis. 
such money coming to Hong Kong in such a rush, and uh, most of the money, ninety percent of the money, will will leave or ninety nine. So what? Ninety nine percent. So what happened is trust. Why they trust? Because Hong Kong under common law, we have the rule of law in Hong Kong. So the money they understand, if anything happened, they can go to court to reclaim their money. Yes. Now, since the national security law, remember there's a, a, a newspaper called Apple Daily. It's a public yes. company. The government went in and basically arrested the chairman Jimmy Lai, and then the whole uh, public company, which is Apple Daily, they call the. Uh, it's very, very big, probably the biggest publishing company in Hong Kong, disappeared from the from the from the public listing. So this is a very worrisome. You cannot just without going through the court, you know, without going through anything, just randomly did the whole company disappear. So this is why Hong Kong as a financial center is finished. Money leaving, a lot of Hong Kong people's money leaving. All the U.S. investors now they are all liquidating. They are all leaving. All right, and uh, of course the other all the other countries they follow U.S. Japan, uh, European, and so on. So the Chinese. Government have to come up uh, a lot with a lot of money to pop up the Hong Kong, Hong Kong uh, index, the stock market index. It's very serious. It's over. Hang Seng. Hang Seng index. It's over. Hong Kong as a financial center is over. It was a gift from U.S. by allowing this uh, so-called link, U.S. dollar Hang and uh, Hong Kong Hang link, down. is guaranteed by the Federal Reserve, U.S. Federal Reserve. That enable Hong Kong, Hong Kong to become the financial center. So people are willing to send huge amount of money into Hong Kong, convert into Hong Kong dollar, play in the stock market, and then convert back into U.S. dollar and leave. So the minute you have a problem with your law, all right, Hong Kong, you don't respect the law. Why should they? This is when they play with the uh, financial market. They spend huge amount of money just to make a very a fraction of a percentage, all right, and that money become risky because of the law. The law is. They can do whatever the Xi Jinping can do, whatever they want, and arrest people can be arrested without trial. It's a very serious situ situation. So Hong Kong as a financial center is over, and I think uh, until the communist, unless the communists leave, the Hong Kong will never recover. All right. Uh, if you don't mind, let's take a couple of questions from our viewers. Uh, this is the first time in a long time of a long time since you came live. So you, let's take some questions, please. Arun wants to know, does China have think tanks within the bureaucracy itself? Do they rely on foreign think tanks? Where does China get reliable advice? China's uh, think tank, uh, very good in uh, kissing ass, uh, Xi Jinping's ass. <laughs> very good, really good. And not only that, they make up story and they use that to attack the America. For example, you know, uh, America say, oh, the virus come from Wuhan. And this thing can, thing can think, say, no, it come from U.S. You know, this is their, their think tank. Their think tank are really uh, uh, help, help teaching conspirator in line. That's what they are. <laughs> I know all of them. I know all of them in Beijing. Next question from Akash Mihir, 84. With lower GDP than Japan and population around 800 million, how long China is going to last? I, I said it already. The communists, in a way, they sacrifice their people. <laughs> it's like going to war. They put the people in the front. And they are the last to survive. That's how, this is the way that system works. The communist system is, you, they talk about for the people, this and that. But in reality, they live on the people. The people are the sacrifice. So it's going to last for a while unless some external factors. For example, if they go to war with Taiwan and then, and then really piss off the U.S., uh, who would really destroy all their nuclear or, or missile base, something like that. But uh, within China itself, we cannot expect uh, much coming from its own people. Uh, next question, please. Arun wants to know, from the picture you are painting, an international settlement bank will impact China more than the United States, right? What does that mean? International uh, um, international settle, settlement bank is where you are. You're trying to, uh, you know, you have a some you have a net deficit with a country or net export. Then you have to settle the uh, uh, dues. Like 
periodically you know the balance happens so many yuan for so many dollars and and the other have to accept yuan see the problem always with the renminbi is the other countries don't accept renminbi for the simple reason i told you that people suspect that multiple copies of the same currency exist and then you peg the renminbi you don't allow it to float it doesn't you don't allow it to find the real value so what happens is all these things come and wait at the international settlement bank where the us will say well wait a minute your your exchange rate is not 6 according to me it is 10 right so, so then let, let me ask is... let me ask so yeah. far all the business done us with hong kong or us with china is so done in us dollars there is no need for international settlement settlement bank that's why i'm not familiar with the bank we never have to use it so all, all most business is done with us dollars so it's either with letter of credit or swift All right, they send money back and forth, and and there is no such issue now. Of course, who is going to be the settle settlement bank? It's going to be the new development bank, the BRIC bank, which who is based in Shanghai. They will do the clearance if there's a different currency and so on and so forth. They will become the settlement bank, I believe. And uh, but it's their problem. It's not going to. It will be a trading issue. I don't. Nobody is going to use the RMB for reserve. They will only use for trading and. It's almost like bartering because the currency nobody else wants it. Only the seller and buyer will temporarily hold it for a while and then use it as soon as possible. They don't want to hold on to it as a reserve currency. So I believe this this whole thing is really to um, to get the U U S nervous. It's part of their multi front war game. So uh, uh, I I don't see it's a major issue. Uh, the the R M B. It will be a threat, but it's not going to cause much damage. Uh, Arun, I can just add a couple of other data points. Uh, I saw, I got this from e, uh, Lee Stock. There is an ATM now. ATM systems are available inside China, where you can put the RMB and you can get digital RMB out. However, you cannot put digital RMB and get yuan out. So they are making it one way, like the way you mentioned that. Uh, they are trying to control this you know count uh, multiple serial number menace and all that stuff second thing that they also said is that uh, this this uh, rmb the digital rmb is actually on a blockchain that's what china claims Do yeah it is, it is it is right okay and and you see one thing i forgot to point out you see right now yeah. let's say i don't know about india but china about 10% of their paper money All right, China is basically all turned to WeChat, pay by WeChat, and yes. uh, Taobao. Taobao is the Alipay. All right, it's already on that. Uh, and credit cards already nobody, use, very few people using their credit card, except they still owe a lot of money to keep it. But most of the money is already on cards. Oh no, no, on mobile phones. It's already on mobile. Maybe ten percent, ten to fifteen percent of the transaction are still doing in paper cash. All right, and By uh, by going digital, they're going to eliminate that fifteen percent, which means all your money will be in the bank, and who control? Of course, the CCP. All right, and there is no more freedom of you uh, doing secret deals. They control every transaction. The minute you misbehave, then they just uh, close your account or stop your freeze your account. So it's it's a it's it's you cannot imagine the loss of freedom. I mean, nobody wants to. No, no Western people wants to live in China. Yeah. Last question. Uh, let Let us stop with this question. I have one last question after this question. Aksha uh, Akash Meher, eighty four. Is how is China preparing for unification with such a bad economy? You mean unification with Taiwan? Yes. Yes. Oh no, it will never happen. The Taiwanese would never live after Hong Kong. They would never accept. A uh, any kind of unification, even one country, two system. Taiwanese is over. I think also. I mean, everybody think, what if the government, the nationalists, uh, are elected as president? It's not going to happen. I don't think U.S. will allow it to happen. There was a um, uh, interview uh, uh, that uh, the 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 last U.S. Uh, assistant uh, secretary of state. Who went to Taiwan, the first highest official, and then he said, "Taiwan for U.S. is a national interest. U.S. will not allow Taiwan to 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 fall into CCP's hand. It will just will not happen. It's like Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. 
these are national interests for the United States. They will not allow means they will not allow. <laughs> they control, in fact, you know, they control all the information uh, 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 ministries of these three countries. They know exactly what's happening. Well, uh, that brings us to a close. I was going to ask you a question, but uh, it slipped my mind. It's all right. We'll we'll pick it up next time. Uh, this is the last question. Absolutely last question. Rahul Kulkarni wants to know, British create Park and US create China, which made entire world suffer. Your thoughts? US create China. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether that's correct. I think US on the lo losing side, right? They, they were supporting <laughs> Chiang Kai-shek. They were supporting Chiang Kai-shek during the Civil War after World War II. But for a while, this guy, uh, Marshall, remember the guy who did the Marshall Plan? Yes. Marshall. Was, Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall was naive. He think, oh, maybe uh, uh, China should have two parties, right? One called Communist Party, one called Nationalist Party. He is trying to say that the, the U.S. system may work in China. Let two party fighting, you know, democracy. I mean, he has no understanding. You cannot live with a Communist Party uh, in one country. It doesn't work. Either you live or they live. There cannot be coexisting. So that's what, what happened. Marshall actually stopped shipment of a lot of the uh, hardware during the Civil War. And that's how Chiang Kai-shek lost uh, in a couple of the big wars, uh, U.S. under uh, Marshall and also Truman. Truman was the president, did not sh ship a lot of military wear. And that really, that's really what happened. You depend on U.S., it's like Ukraine now. If U.S. Uh, stop cutting them a check next week, they are all over. That's true. That's true. Well, thank you so much, Elmer. It was a revelation. Please, viewers, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And also like this video. Elmer would love to come share his thoughts on our view, our channel on a periodic basis. He's a very busy man. And thank you so much, Elmer, for taking time out of your schedule to talk to our viewers. Please, always click on the bell button for notifications and follow Elmer on Twitter. He does have a fair amount of... Uh, information on his Twitter handle. It's at Elmer UN minus 3IR1 and the channel is P Gurus 1. Thanks once again, Elmer. Namaskar. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye.